Melinda and it's, uh, it's something that is really hard to explain. You know, before uh, the birth, everyone says, oh, it's this, that and the other and you sort of take it all in and try and get a perspective on what it's going to be like. But, but really, it, uh, it's something that you really have to experience to appreciate. Well, I'd like to think she looks like me, but most people don't want that. <laughs> I mean, most people don't think that's a good thing, but I reckon it'd be all right if she looked like me. So um, it's a little hard to tell. Right now, they, they all seem to look the same. You know, you sort of have to check the name tag, make sure you've got the right one. I was there right to the end. It was um, when I first got to the hospital. Uh, I'm not a big hospital man, and just the smell and stuff, I was feeling a bit queasy. But once Melinda got stuck into it, and I was trying to help her out, you really don't think too much about anything else. So. I was right on track and, and when it was near the end I was I was really getting into it and giving her like a big half time speech pushing her along and stuff. It was uh, it was great. It's uh, it certainly gives you a new perspective of what women go through and I thank God that I was born a man after seeing what they have to go through to, to give birth. Hi, this is Derek Rucker from the Foster's Falcons. Welcome to round ten. Shane Hill was devastating. Continuing last week's brilliant form, he drove home threes from way out and was just as busy at the other end, frustrating North's Daryl McDonald. Leroy Loggins was his creative self, his long range shots evening the scores before half time, before the hammer hit another big three to make it 17 points for him for the first term and hand the bullet to four point first break lead. D-Mac was responsible for unleashing the Giants offensive assault in the second term. And despite a last ditch fight back, the Bullets took it out by a point, 115 to 114. At the near capacity, crowd was treated to some great basketball. Jay's coach. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Look at oh. Bang. Oh. Look at this. Jam this. Watch this. Yeah. The Devils at one stage led by 11 points, but the Tigers reined them in and by the main break held sway by three. The third quarter was a beauty with the teams trading baskets. Perry with the bomb on the buzzer locking the scores. The Tigers hit the first six points of the final term and with the likes of Bradke scoring at 92% and Gay 69%, the Devils had run their race. Late in the term, Nelson, who debuted with 24 points and 10 rebounds, crashed to the floor. Fortunately, there was no serious damage. The Suns really have some up and down scoring. Daryl Johnson on that shot right there, he had 25 points, but he was only two of nine from outside the three point arc. Yes, but have a look at this, Ricky Jones, these Carrara backboards, gosh, they've copped a pounding in recent years. Jim Havrilla shattered the glass a couple of years back and now, or last year, at the start of last year, Ricky broke the rim, didn't hold the game up for too much longer, but Andre Lafleur was leading the Gold Coast in, as I said, a massive final quarter. Nice assist from Tony D'Ambrosis there. Mitchell makes the dunk. The rollers, boy, they look good when it's in the open court, but they're smart. They run a half-court game when they don't have the fast break. Right through to late in the second quarter, and then that man there, Derek Rucker, inspired them. He gets the assist for Dozier here, and then we see Rucker with a back-breaking tray. Sydney never got back in the game. It's quite play. amazing. That's right, Billy. On that play right there, big three by Rucker, and he's very charged up. He was fouled by Tim Morrissey on the shot, and Tim had to leave the game. He bumped some knees, and hopefully that's not a bad injury for him. It was that second quarter where the Falcons got that lead, and they were never able to come back. Andrew Gay is looking at another big, big score. A real scoring feast, in fact, even though, as we say, the Tigers scored the 25 points in the first six minutes, the Magic were not that far behind them. Adonis Jordan, nice pass to Sam McKinnon. And man, can that kid play. And he is so athletic. Just 17 or 18 years old. I know it's no more than 18. <laughs> Very competitive player, too. Magic lead by five. Six seconds left. Jordan to Dorge. Picks his moment. Makes the crucial basket. Nice bit of execution here from the Bullets. Heel finds Larkins who makes the tray. There was just a simmering feeling in this one too, Steve, and I couldn't quite understand it actually. Well, this has always been a, just a rough and tough game as you're going to see right here. Roger Smith and Melvin Thomas tangling up and that results in a bit of a scuffle. Robert Sibley trying to break up the fight and then it turns into him getting entangled into it. So I think that just emotions running high there. Two players ejected after that, we should say, of course, Sibley and Thomas. Now, that left these teams obviously under strength. I think uh, Illawarra probably lost a little more because Melbourne is uh, more of a key to their team. The Bullets with a little more depth. 
but Illawarra would not let go of this game, typical for a hometown performance. And Illawarra was right in this game to the last minute. And this backbreaker from Shane Heal actually put the game just out of reach in the last few seconds. Justin Withers rattled off quick points as everyone for the Cannons contributed towards a 14-point quarter-time lead, 36 to 22. For inspiration, though, it's hard to go past Crawford and Ricky Grace. Rejected by Crawford. Great move by Crawford. Garhoff goes to Grace. Way up is good. Grace is hurt. He's gone down. Is it an ankle or the thigh? It might be an ankle. He's just coming into your picture now, struggling back, and he stole the ball. <laughs> Pick the pocket. Clever move on Kendrick. There's Fisher. Fisher gets two. Early in the third, Jason Reese, who had been at his blue chip best, joined Grace on the sidelines. Crawford saw a chance and took it a couple of times to tease the locals, but it was the Vlahoff influence in shutting down Herzog and scoring at the other end that capped off a match-winning quarter. Let's just pause for a moment and talk about Vince Hinchin, who has stepped up for Geelong. For all that, Geelong led by 26 to 16 at quarter time. Scotty Nurse there with a the fast break and the dunk. We're going to see a repeat dose of that. Was that the same shot? No, that's just Scotty. Half time, it was 46 all. Adelaide coming back. Now Ray Born up, isolated well. Stevens now with that three. And he's done. It was that way at half time. Spout in it. It's all over. A great game of basketball here at the Powerhouse. I have a degree in aviation administration, so I'd probably be somewhere flying a plane or something. More than likely be playing football. Yeah, I've always been reasonably talented in, in both the sports. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably still be working for telecom, you know, yeah, putting phones on and things, so I, I uh, wouldn't have that uh, place in, in life where I'd be an executive or something, but I'd, I'd certainly be out working, doing something. I ran a sporting goods business back in Adelaide uh, and I coached at the Institute, so I guess basketball's been a big part of my life, so I'd probably get involved in coaching kids or uh, moving to something else. I would have liked to have tried to play uh, tennis, so um, I don't know, I hadn't given it much thought because basketball's been such a big part of my life. I planned on, before I, uh, before I decided to play basketball, I was going to go to law school, and I was accepted to go to a couple of law schools. So that's what I would do, and I don't think I could do it anymore. It's a few years of playing basketball, I think you'd you lose certain disciplines. <laughs> Hi, I'm Phil Spice in the Adelaide 36ers, and here's round 11. And this is just vintage Melbourne Tigers, the alley-oop to Copeland, and that's about the best way you can finish a fast break. Mark Mackay with a long three. But I just don't, I don't know if Adelaide can get it done from the outside, from the perimeter. And if Willie, Willie Simmons is as much of an offensive threat as they need. And then it's with a three that wasn't even close, and that's just like an outlet pass going to Copeland. Nice little spin move and finish over Scotty, Scotty Ninnis. A three-pointer from Shebank is good. Oh, Great yes. Pass. Sensational pass, Graham Shebank. So the last second play, it's there for Johnson. They worked it well, and it goes down as well. The Suns continued to impress in the final quarter and an upset was imminent. But a shooting slump midway through the final term proved costly. Newcastle hit several clutch baskets and wound down the clock to sneak home with a five-point win. And here we go, an easy two to Michael Johnson. Stewart was hot from outside. And at one stage, the Devils rested the lead from the Wildcats. He goes a three from Stewart. One. At the main break, Perth led by three, but there was the real sense of an upset brewing. The third quarter was highlighted by some great defensive plays by new Devils import Keith Nelson. In just his second match, he equaled the club's record for block shots with seven. But unlike other games, the Devils refused to lie down. Stewart, then Perry scored, and the Devils were back in business. Everyone wants us to win this game, even the refs. I've got the foul for it. It would be enormous, but it's in the safe hands of Andrew Vlahov. 
Belford has got it, and a holding foul. Intentional. On Andrew Vlahov. I think he's called that an intentional foul. The Devils have beaten the Perth Wildcats. Can Bye. you believe it? Brad Williams with the three-point basket there. Very versatile, Brad Williams. Damian Keogh with a cross-court pass. Do not do that with this man in a game. And now he's <laughs> deciding to dunk more. Gets another dunk. What can you say about that guy? Or this guy? Boy, he, have you ever heard of a quiet 43? <laughs> I really think he had a quiet 43. And look at this play. Finally get the basketball of Daryl McDonald, but he finally get, he somehow gets it back. He kicks it to an open teammate, Greg Hubbard. Gets a miss there, and then it's Leon Trimmingham with the rebound and the dunk. The shot started to fall in the second quarter, but still there was only two points between the sides at half time. The Cannons edging in front, 43-41. Backhanded shot goes in and takes two. A strong third quarter from Justin Withers as he raced to 17 for the game, kept the Cannons necks in front through the third quarter. The Sixers should have gone into the final quarter with a lead, but they were paying the penalty for poor shooting from the free throw line, hitting just nine from 23. What they were at the beginning of the game, that was a difficult shot from Withers. They put that behind them as they blitzed the cannons in the run home. A 16-2 push had Canberra on the ropes. Takes the two, drew the foul. This Tony Jensen had 27 points, 11 assists. He shot the ball 11 of 16 from the field, and he had eight rebounds to go with that, too. He is playing very handy for them. Nice little dish to Derek Rucker. He was, he was tough, too. He had 33 points in that basketball game, or in the 30s somewhere. Leroy Loggins off of the glass. And how, how many times have you seen him do that? Usually in the clutch situation, you see the clock winding down. That's Leroy Loggins' time. That man Jensen again, setting up a Paul Kuiper dunk this time. As Mick Corcoran's coming up here with a pretty good play, drives and as the leaner for two points. Vince Henschen, another wonderful performance. He's lifted his scoring and I think nothing against Adrian Branch, but it seems that he's lifted after Branch as well. Geelong by 13 at half time and they dominated the boards. A big battle here. Finally, it's kicked out to that man Henschen once again. Sets himself, makes the mid-range two. Henschen gets two here to finish it up. Geelong really walk this game to the line. Martin Catalini stepped up. He had a big half. He scored off the fast break here. Bruce Bolden coming up with some, well, some rare points, I have to say. He did have a big first quarter, but he didn't score at all in the second as Perth started to make a bit of a run. Now, Adonis Jordan, he's starting to find his feet in this league as well. Had a great half. He kept Ricky Gray scoreless until the last two minutes of that half. Catalini again, he's seeing how those young players, Traher and Bruton, are responding to the challenge, and he's doing the same nice little drive by Adonis Jordan. Hi, I'm Phil Smythe from the Adelaide 36ers, and here's round 12. Hobart's big guns were hitting the hoop from outside to trim the margin back to four points early in the term. All of a sudden, the Tigers were fighting to defend their 11-4 win-loss record. Drewy Gaze taking charge with a 14-point second term. But with Telford showing his stylish stuff again, Tassie were able to take it right up to Melbourne, up to midway through the third. Beyond there, the Tigers fired off 12 unanswered points to power away to a 15-point lead. A fantastic year. Mark Davis again, so effective around the basket. He's so good at finishing those baskets when he's fouled. Nice pass from Robert Rose. Don't they miss him? Butch Hayes is going to make a nice little step through move and a nice little finger roll to drop that one in. But it was just too much Adelaide. Nice sharp pass to Robert Rose and he was just fantastic. We see a nice little jump shot by Michael Johnson. He just drains the three. He can really shoot the ball. He's been shooting it well for a long time. As a matter of fact, that was his 7,000th point. But he's only three of the game. Jordan, well, he got the two there. The second quarter was where the Magic really started to pour it on. They outscored Newcastle in that quarter by 30 to 15. And Sam McKinnon making an impact too. He had three big blocks to go with his eight points. Well, Derek Rucker was only two of eight from outside the three-point line. That was one of them that went down. But he still had 13 assists, so he still had an effective game. One of the keys to this match was the way that the Magic were able to contain Dozier and Rucker. Andrew Vlahov's pressure on Thomas continued early in the second as Hayes loosened up. 
Not to be outdone, Grace's steel evened up the personal battle. The steel from Grace. Down the other end, it's two on two. Grace fires for three. Too much time for Ricky on that shot.